The FDA approved an eye drop in the summer of 2025, just recently, that is meant to treat presbyopia, which means that this eye drop can help you get rid of your need for reading glasses. Now, I got so many messages about this from my family, from my colleagues, from doctors who are not eye doctors, asking about this drop and my opinion on it. So I thought it would be a good topic to make a video about because it is actually a pretty remarkable advancement. There is one one risk that everyone should know about and it's important that we talk about it because it's rare and it's unlikely but it's important to know about and time will tell how real of a risk this problem really is. Now it's also important to know that this type of eye drop is actually not the first of its kind. There is an eye drop that already exists to treat presbyopia, but this eye drop and the newer eye drop are slightly different in how they work as well as in their potential side effects. So today we are going to get into everything that you need to know about these two eye drops, how they are different, how they are similar, the side effect profile, and the one thing that I really worry about as an ophthalmologist uh, and what I would want all my patients to know if they are considering to use this drop in the future. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Sai Nagori. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. You're watching the ifax.com channel. And if you wanna stay in the know about all things on how to keep your eyes healthy, keep your vision good until you die, be sure to hit like and subscribe below. So let's dive in. So the first drop that came out to treat presbyopia and eliminate the need for reading glasses is called Vuity. Now, Vuity is the brand name for a drug called pilocarpine, and it comes in the 1.25 strength. Pilocarpine is a drop that has been around forever, and we have used it in ophthalmology for many, many years, but the 1.25% is different, and this is specifically used for presbyopia treatment. So this drop works by two mechanisms. One is that it shrinks the pupil, and then the second mechanism is that it causes the ciliary muscle in the eye to contract and now this improves your near vision in two different ways so the first one is through a pinhole effect because it shrinks the pupil and then by contracting the ciliary muscle it actually increases your focusing power or your accommodation but it does also carry a risk of side effects like having a brow ache headache as well as temporary nearsightedness which we call a myopic shift now the headache will go away after a certain time but it is important to let patients know that this could happen now the second eye drop, the one that's more recently come out is called Viz. And now this is the brand name for a drug called acyclidine, and it mainly works on the pupil rather than on the muscle that I was talking about earlier. So this drug makes the pupil smaller and this is called meiosis. Now the difference is that because this drug does not strongly act on the eyes focusing muscle, which is the ciliary muscle, it can improve vision through the pinhole effect and sharpen images, but it has a lower side effect profile when it comes to things like having the brow ache or eye muscle spasms. Now, both drugs in clinical trials have shown that they help people to see up close without reducing their distance vision clarity. And obviously this is real important because you don't want to then have distance vision issues even though your near vision has been corrected. So the one thing also to note is that no direct studies have compared these two drops head to head. So it's hard to have a direct comparison of the two, but we can talk about both of them. So as you can see, the side effects of brow aches and headaches can happen, but I'll be honest, as an ophthalmologist, that's really not what I care about. Of course, I don't want my patients to have headaches, but the headache will resolve when you stop taking the drop and you can also take medication to make your headache resolve. So there is one potential risk, and I say potential because it's not very common and actually this was not actually reported in the actual clinical trials, but there is a risk with meiotics of having something called a retinal detachment. Now, before we talk about retinal detachments, it's important to note that the trials that were done for both of these drops did not show patients getting retinal detachments. So now you may be thinking, wait, so if the trials didn't show that, why am I worried? Well, 
with the first drop that came out, the pilocarpine 1.25%, there were case reports that happened after the drug was already on the market of patients having retinal detachments, not many, with this drop. And some of them had some pre-existing conditions, which we will talk about. And so I worry because we do know as the ophthalmology community that having a retinal detachment is a potential complication of using any meiotic agent or something that makes the pupils smaller. Now, the second reason that I feel like this is important to talk about is that retinal detachments are serious eye issues. It's not like having a headache that will just go away. If you have a retinal detachment, it can be pretty serious. It can lead to permanent vision loss. And even if you are able to identify it quickly, get it treated quickly, go to see the retina specialist, everything is done right. Even if everything is done right, your vision just may never actually get back to exactly what it was. And it also may be a long road of procedures and surgeries to get you there. So the good news is, is that it is pretty unlikely to happen, but there are ways that you can protect yourself against this. What is important to know is that retinal issues with the use of these types of drops are more likely to happen in patients who may already be predisposed for retinal problems. This means you may have certain retinal problems like lattice degeneration, or you may have something called high myopia, which means that you are very nearsighted, negative six, negative seven, higher negative prescriptions have an increased risk. Also, if you have a history of retinal detachment or retinal tear, any retinal holes or breaks, then probably not a good idea to take one of these drops. And so if this is an eye drop you want to consider taking, what I would do is I would go in for a full dilated eye exam with a retina specialist. And I am a glaucoma specialist and I also see a lot of general ophthalmology patients, but if it were me and I wanted to take this drop, I would have one of my retina colleagues examine me completely, make sure that there is no structural issues in my retina or any reason that they would say, hey, it's probably not a good idea for you to take this drop or your retina looks good, you're very low risk for any complications. So I would say go into the retina specialist and have them look at your eye very carefully. Now, when looking through the literature, most of the cases of retinal detachment that happened with meiotic use that happened after the drug was on the market, these patients had some pre-existing condition. So there was one case report in which the doctors couldn't really find a good reason or a good pre-existing clinical condition for why the retinal detachment happened. So this patient was a 62 year old man. He had no history of eye surgery. He had normal vision before treatment. And then he developed a horseshoe retinal tear as well as vitreous hemorrhage, which is bleeding inside the eye within minutes of applying a single drop of pilocarpine 1.2. So previous reports that have linked pilocarpine and other meiotic eye drops to retinal tears and detachments, usually the patient will have risk factors like I mentioned before. So myopia, nearsightedness, maybe they had recent cataract surgery, or they had some sort of retinal disease. But this patient in this case report did not have any of these and actually had the problem in both eyes. So why do these type of eye drops that constrict the pupil even have the potential for causing retinal detachments? So it is rare, but it's theorized that what happens when the pilocarpine works is that it changes the lens's position inside the eye. And this can actually potentially cause traction or pulling of the vitreous and the vitreous starts to pull on the retina, which can then lead to a retinal detachment. So because the clinical trials that were done of the pilocarpine excluded higher risk patients and followed them for about 30 days, it may explain why no retinal detachments were reported because sometimes these retinal tears and detachments happened after 30 days and they happened in high risk patients. So they're not common in patients who are better candidates than others. The chance is not zero, but it's far, far less than if you already are likely to have some kind of retinal issue. So all of this is to highlight the importance of getting a full thorough eye exam and checking for pre-existing retinal conditions before starting this type of eye drop. Also, it's also important to note that even without a pre-existing condition, the risk of having a retinal issue from these types of drops does exist, again, 
uncommon and rare, but if it happens to you, it can be a long road to restore vision in the affected eye. So what I would do if I was going to take this eye drop is get a full thorough eye exam with my retina colleagues and I would also probably only take the eye drop in one eye to start and make sure that I'm not having any issues from it. Also, it's important to know the signs and symptoms of a potential retinal tear and detachment because if you are having one, you need to go see a retina doctor right away. So these can include flashing lights, floaters, a curtain coming over the vision, a decrease in vision, as well as potential visual field cuts. So sometimes patients will describe that there is just a part of their vision that is just cut out and they can't really see that area. So I understand that needing reading glasses is annoying, so it's not unusual that patients would want a solution for this. And remember to have your retina check to determine whether you would be an okay candidate for this or not. Hope you found this helpful. Remember to hit subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.